Okay, so uh, let's dive into this stack of sources you sent over. We've got articles, Daily Mail, Jerusalem Post, Liberty Line, Unidentified Phenomena. Right, and research notes too. Some analysis from a Colombian radiologist, a team at UNAM in Mexico. Plus a whole lot of social media chatter. Posts from X, users like Ulysses Velen, Cub Murtagida, Tarkan007, Truth X, Don Stribling, Rafiki, Corbin, Christopher. Quite the list. It really is. And it all seems to circle around this one object, doesn't it? The Bugosphere, causing a real stir. Absolutely. Hmm. So our mission today, yours and mine, is to wade through all this uh, material and really pull out the key stuff, the details, the insights about this Bugosphere. Let's try and unpack it, where it came from, what it does, why everyone's so fascinated. Right, let's do it. So this story seems to properly kick off in Buga, Colombia, March 2nd, 2025. The sources seem pretty clear on the date. Yeah, they mentioned two different witnesses getting videos that day, and the thing that jumped out immediately was how this thing moved. This metallic sphere. Exactly. Moving erratically, like zigzagging high speeds. <sighs> it just didn't behave like any, you know, normal aircraft. That erratic movement is definitely a common thread. And there was something about power lines. An interaction. Yeah, several sources mentioned that, like it had some kind of electrical discharge or maybe a reaction as it got close to high voltage lines. Hmm, just some kind of energy thing going on. Potentially. Anyway, eventually it apparently landed somewhere nearby in a wooded area and uh, it was recovered. And the descriptions when they found it are pretty consistent, right? Yeah. Seamless metallic orb, intricate designs etched on it. Yeah, seamless is a word that comes up a lot. And these detailed markings on the surface, it wasn't just some rough piece of metal. But this all blew up later, didn't it? The videos didn't really surface until, what, March 26th? That's right. They hit social media, went viral pretty fast, and then the news outlets started picking up the story. So X basically was the launch pad for this whole thing. Pretty much. That's where the initial videos and then later the alleged analysis photos really spread. Okay, so we've got the object, the videos, but what makes it so weird, the sources really focus on its properties, which seem baffling. This is where it gets uh, really interesting, challenging even to our current understanding of physics. Let's start with its weight. Okay, so the sources say two kilograms when first recovered, but then it changed. Yes. This is maybe one of the strangest reported details. Later measurements apparently showed the weight fluctuating wildly, up to 10 kilograms, then settling later at six kilos. Whoa. Kamu Murtigeta on X highlighted that, right? The changing weight. That user did, yeah. Pointed out the dramatic shift based on the reports. I mean, spontaneous mass change. That yeah. just doesn't happen in our physics books. Exactly. What it suggests, if true, is, well, either manipulating its own density somehow or interacting with some unknown energy, something way beyond our tech. It's not just heavy or light. It's actively changing. That's well, profound. It implies a level of control over its physical state that's, frankly, hard to grasp. Okay, changing weight is one major anomaly. Then there's this thing with water. Ulysses 11 shared a video evaporating water without heating it. That's the claim circulating based on the sources. The report is it makes water just disappear. No detectable temperature increase. How? Well, again, we're guessing based on the reports, but it points towards some seriously advanced energy manipulation, maybe complex electromagnetic fields or some tech that messes with molecular structures directly, bypassing heat altogether. Mind-bending stuff, doing work, causing a phase change with no heat involved. Yeah. Okay, what about the actual material? What's it made of? Also fascinating, there's analysis mentioned from a Colombian radiologist, Jose Luis Velasquez, the Liberty Line reported on this. He identified it as an aluminum alloy. Okay, aluminum alloy, we know that. Its hardness was measured at around 330. Your standard aerospace aluminum alloy is maybe 170. Double the hardness. Pretty much, and apparently that level of hardness isn't commercially available. Not something you can just order. So, familiar material, but processed or created in a way that makes it extraordinary. Exactly. The sources also say it's magnetic and emits some heat. Which is interesting, given the water thing. And it deflects x-rays. That makes it hard to study, right? Extremely. You can't easily see what's inside without, you know, breaking it open. Which researchers from UNAM apparently did, according to the Liberty Line. Yes, that Liberty Line article claims the UNAM team did confirm optical fibers embedded inside, but they apparently had to physically damage a part of the sphere to find that out. Optical fibers inside, suggesting complex systems, communication, energy transfer. 
could be any of those. It definitely reinforces the idea that this isn't just a solid lump of metal. There's complexity within. And going back to that seamless construction you mentioned, no welds, no joins. Making something seamless like that, especially with a super hard alloy at the scale, it's incredibly difficult with current human manufacturing, maybe impossible. The sources highlight this as a major puzzle piece pointing away from a simple explanation. Okay, so the physical properties are just off the charts, weird. Then are those designs etched onto it, geometric patterns, star shape, triangles, and maybe script. Yeah, the sources mention comparisons. The Daily Mail article from May 8th brings up runes, Olgum, that old Irish script, even Mesopotamian cuneiform. But no definitive match. No consensus, no mainstream translation that everyone agrees on. It looks like writing, but what writing? Except one ex-user, Tarkhank007, offered a really specific translation using old Turkic. Yes, Tarkhank07, around May 19th, they posted this interpretation, claimed some symbols read K-Z-N-T-K-S-E-Y-E. -E. And the translation was? Using old Turkic script, Tarkhank007 translated it as Kazan Daki Nefis Iyi, which apparently means the spirit in the cauldron is good in Turkish. The spirit in the cauldron is good. Okay, what's the thinking there? The interpretation is that Kazan, or cauldron, is the sphere itself. So the phrase implies its energy or its purpose or maybe even some kind of internal sentience is benevolent. Good. A cauldron, like in folklore. Exactly. Tarkant 07 connects it to Turkish and Central Asian folklore, where cauldrons often symbolize abundance, protection, mystical power. It adds this whole cultural layer. So if you take that translation, it hints at intent, consciousness, a spirit. It certainly aligns with the reports of it moving on its own, interacting with the power lines, and it fits with what others were suggesting online, like Don Stribbling replying to Truth Polex. What did Stribbling suggest? She floated the idea it could be a conscious entity, or maybe a sort of donation for study from non-human intelligence, NHI. So the translation adds fuel to that fire. This raises the big question, what are the scientists actually saying? We saw those images, right? People in hazmat suits. Yeah, Truth Wolex shared images supposedly from a Germany company laboratory, showed researchers some in protective gear. They did x-ray scans, apparently. But the deflection made it hard. Right. The scans reportedly showed a complex internal structure, but the x-rays couldn't penetrate fully. So limited data without destructive analysis. And the opinions on what it is seem pretty split in the sources. Skepticism versus something else. Very split. On one hand, you've got physicists like Julia Mossbridge quoted in the Jerusalem Post. She suggested maybe it's just a really cool art project. A very sophisticated hoax, essentially. Possibly. She recommended proper, rigorous study mentioning Avi Loeb's Galileo project, which specifically looks for potential ET artifacts using scientific methods. So a grounded scientific approach <laughs> keeps the human origin possibility open. Definitely. But then you have others, like the radiologist Jose Luis Velasquez in the Liberty Line. He apparently described it simply as unidentified, something defying known science. Leaning towards NHI. The properties, the seamlessness, the hardness, the fibers, they lend weight to that argument, according to these sources. And the Daily Mail mentioning symbols like ancient script, that opens the door to it being maybe a relic from some advanced civilization, past or otherwise. You know, talking about mysterious metallic spheres, it's almost impossible not to think of the Bet sphere. Oh yeah, the Bet's mystery sphere. That comparison comes up quite a bit. Truth Polex mentioned it on X. Just remind us quickly, Florida, 1974. That's the one. The Betts family found this metal orb about 8 inches, 22 pounds, after a fire. And it reportedly did weird things, moved on its own, vibrated, reacted to music, even followed the family around. Spooky. The Navy looked at it. They did. Origin officially undetermined back then. Although there is a more mundane explanation now, right? Yes. The common skeptical take, like from Skeptoid back in 2012, is that it was likely an industrial part of ball check valve. The movement, uneven floors, vibrations, maybe even observer bias. But the sources discussing the bogosphere, they bring up bets in the context of NHI. Some do, yeah. Don Stribbling, replying to Truth Polex again, explicitly linked bets and buga to non-human intelligence. He mentioned the bet sphere following like a dog and the buga sphere hitting the power lines. You've brought up Billy Meyer. Yeah. Reference Meyer's controversial claims about ET craft parking against trees to drain energy, trying to draw a parallel in behavior, suggesting maybe these spheres have a purpose related to energy interaction. And that unidentified phenomena article, 
It mentioned other spheres, too. Jim Marlin's 1801s. Right, hinting that maybe Booga isn't isolated. Perhaps these things appear more often than we realize. It adds to the intrigue. Is this a one-off or part of a pattern? Okay, so pulling all this together, the strange properties, the symbols, the conflicting science, the bets comparison, what are the leading theories on where this Booga sphere actually came from, according to the sources? Well, you've got the more, let's say, grounded explanations, like Julia Mossbridge's art project idea, a very clever human creation. Or a hoax, as the Daily Mail noted, questioning if the fall was even officially confirmed. Exactly. Skilled artist, engineer, designed to make us talk wonder, plausible. Then, then, there's that theory from Cabo Mutagueta, the uh, less conventional one. Ah, uh, yes. The Andromedan theory. Cabo Mutagueta proposed this on X back in early May, Suggested its technology from the Andromeda Galaxy. Specifically. A toy. Specifically, yeah. A recreational toy, maybe lost by young Andromedans exploring Earth. Like kids losing a drone or a ball. An alien kid lost their toy here. That's quite a thought. It's the theory put forward. It would explain the high-speed autonomous movement part of the game. And Kabamor Tegeta even suggested the symbols looking maybe a bit crude could fit that idea, like doodles on a toy. It certainly paints a different picture of E.T. contact. Not scouts, not invaders, just yeah. kids playing nearby. It's a very different narrative, definitely. Highly speculative, of course, but it's one of the perspectives shared in the sources. Offers a less intimidating angle than, say, crashed military craft. So the sources give us this huge range. Yeah. Sophisticated human art, deliberate hoax, maybe some kind of unknown natural phenomena or yeah. alien tech. Possibly even lost property. And without more data, without getting past those defensive properties non-invasively, the origin is still very much up in the air. The sources are clear on that lack of certainty. But regardless of where it came from, yeah. it undeniably became a huge global thing super fast, mostly because of social media. Absolutely. Those initial videos, the ones you listed 11 and others shared, they just exploded online. Users like Truth Polex, Kabamur Tegeda, Tarkant007 became central figures in the discussion, sharing updates, theories, those lab photos. Which added this layer of like ongoing investigation. Exactly. It felt like the story was unfolding in real time for many people following online. And the public reaction, judging you by the online chatter, mm -hmm. pretty diverse. Totally. Everything from pure awe and wonder to deep skepticism demanding hard proof, and lots of creative ideas like Rafiki suggesting testing it with a Tibetan bull's vibrations, people were engaged. And culturally, that Tarkank 007 translation, the spirit in the cauldron is good, that seemed to strike a chord. It really did. For some, it offered a positive message, you know, hope, maybe protection, found within this total mystery, tapped into that human need for meaning. And for the UFO community, obviously, it felt like potentially tangible evidence a possible breakthrough. So stepping back from just what it is, what does the whole Bugusphere event as covered in these sources teach us or make us think about? It? Well, if, and it's a big if, if it were confirmed as NHI tech, mm. the sources suggest it could revolutionize everything, advance energy manipulation, material science, maybe even our understanding of intelligence itself. Imagine the innovation it could spark. And even if it turns out to be human made. <laughs> <laughs> or something else entirely. Even then, it's a powerful case study in how mystery captivates us, how the unexplained can actually bring people together globally. The Jerusalem Post pointed out how these things foster dialogue, even if they remain unsolved. People talking, collaborating, questioning. Uncult. The interpretations, the ancient scripts idea, the spirit translation, they show how we try to fit the unknown into frameworks we understand. It reflects our deep curiosity, our desire to find meaning, maybe even hope when faced with something truly baffling. So here we are, end of May, 2025. And the bogosphere is still firmly in the mystery box. Absolutely. The sources make it clear it's an ongoing puzzle. Scientific work is likely continuing. Maybe new tech will let us peek inside eventually without damaging it. And the stories around it, the cultural meaning, will keep evolving too, I bet. No doubt. Whatever it ultimately turns out to be, it's already made a mark. It's become the symbol of our search for knowledge, our fascination with the unknown, maybe our hope for connection. The Bugosphere. This seamless metal ball drops out of the sky in Colombia, changes weight, evaporates water, deflects x-rays covered in symbols. Sparks global debate, connects to old mysteries like bets, pushes the boundaries of science and belief. It's a potent little object. More than just an object, really. It feels like a window, right? A window onto the unknown making us ask these huge questions. 
Yeah, questions about technology, intelligence, our place in the cosmos. And it highlights how one unexplained event can light up the whole world, from labs to social media feeds. So maybe the final thought for you listening to this. Perhaps the real secret of the Bugosphere isn't about finding a definitive answer for what it is. Maybe it's more about how its mere existence challenges us all. How it sparks that curiosity. Exactly. And reminds us that maybe the most important discoveries aren't the final answers, but the willingness to ask the big weird questions together when faced with something truly unexplained. A compelling thought. The quest definitely continues.